Happy birthday, Craig. Oh man, they're driving me crazy. I gotta get, I need them in the, in the same room for five hours. That's it, five hours. Five hours, get them in the room for five hours. Get this shit together. So like you're a little perturbed, what, what's going on? Man, goddamn music. <laughs> you know? Because it's, it's written there on the paper. It's right, it's all there. You know, the, the, the level, the level, um, you know, great musicianship. There's great musicians there and it's all on the paper, so play it. Play it and let's not, let's not be rushing through this. Let's, let's get it right, let's do it right. You know, at, at this time in my life, you know, there's things, you know, I want to make sure they're done right. The one that I always wanted them to be right, but I guess when your mortality comes before you and you just, you know, you just don't want to be like laying down no, no nonsense, you know. Give me the history of, of, of this concept of the workshop and why in Harlem. The concept of the, of the workshop goes back way before my time, probably to uh, the beginnings of this music because musicians always got together and they would play all day. I mean, they played sun up to sun down, no audience. So, and, and the craft, that, 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 that's the way you perfect your craft. That's why the level of our predecessors is so high because they were always playing. And we've seen the kid into this utilitarian thing of like, well, I only play when the gig comes up, or we get together when the gig comes up. And that's why we're so slow. And I, I understand that we don't have to go out there and play for free for people, but you could come on over to my house. Let's, 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 let's work things out. You know, I mean, you hear things about like John Coltrane, how Freddie Hubbard, Wayne Shorter, Charles Davis, all kinds of musicians would go over this man's house and they would share, they would get things together. You know, Mingus always had people come working things out. Uh, uh, Warren Smith, who was a teacher of mine, he had a composer's workshop. You know, it's, it's where you, you uh, really cut your teeth on your craft and also it's where you network with, with your, your future colleagues for life, you know, like, uh, in this ensemble, I've, known, I've been playing music with Richard for a long time. I've known Richard maybe 50 years. I've been playing music with EJ for years. And we all were in these workshops with people like uh, Sam Rivers, uh, Bill Barron, Jackie Byer, uh, Frank Forster, uh, who else had it? Uh, just so many people have had these, these workshop things. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not uncommon. Just it needs to happen in Harlem more. And it needs to happen, we need an alternative to the regular jam session. Because the jam session is um, serve, in service of, of drink and getting to meet somebody, meeting, meeting a man or a woman. And I have no problem with meeting men or women, or I have no problem with people drinking, but the music is, is, is contained. And why the dryer? The, the, the dryer because, uh, the Dwyer is in the it's right in the middle of Central Harlem. It has a, a significant history as a, as a warehouse in Harlem. I told you it was a, a rehab. I told the people before, I don't know if you heard, it was a rehab where they used to just come. This, uh, Dr. Matthews used to come in the 60s and just, like, you see some people that were strung out on drugs, he just, like, throw them in the car and bring them up here and hold them hostage and, and cold turkey them and would work on them. And the Dwyer has a significant uh, presence in this community. For a long time, when the Dwyer was, a lot of community organizations wanted the, wanted the Dwyer before the developer got it and developed it now. But it used to be, there used to be a man, and I forgot his name, he used to show political films right on front of the Dwyer all the time. He used to show the films right on the, you know, he put a white, painted it white, and they would show the films on the Dwyer. The Dwyer has a long history. And that's, that's why the Dwyer. And, uh, uh, ICA, which is an organization here, and Community Works has, have been really uh, very warm toward me as an artist because they, they feel that we, you know, that I fit here and they fit with me. And that sense, uh, Jeanette Hawkins said, Craig, maybe we can just start this thing here. And to go back to this thing about community, throughout the so-called third worlds, you know, musicians always play in their neighborhoods. It's a, it's a strange thing. There's a famous Senegalese musician named Yusun Do, and he travels, he plays throughout the world and stuff like that. But if you really want to see him really hit, you go to his club in Chosan, uh, in Grand Dakar. 
it's like it's it's such a beautiful thing. Like you know, people get away from all the celebrity stuff. Like Yusu was walking in the crowd. It's like maybe seven, eight hundred people that right there, and he just comes in. And he, hey, Yusu, give me that dollar. You know, you know, give me give me a dollar, man. And you know, it's, it's community. And, and and hey, call your mother. You know, it's that kind of thing. And he could just walk to the gig from there. And the same thing with Fela. Fela used to just be in the bathtub, like, and the band would be at the shrine warming up, and he lived right around the corner from the shrine. He'd be in the bathtub. He'd be there, be ready in a minute. <laughs> and and he, he rolled in there about one o'clock in the morning. Or, oh, you know, when, when we travel to Cuba. The Cuba, you know, it's, it's, that, it's, it's having that music in the community. Like, they're playing down the street. It's, it's that star. It ain't about that star thing. Like, old Big Head Craig and them playing down the street. Let's go down there. And he, he owe me some money anyway, right, right, right. you know? And so it, that community base, it, I think it, it, it feeds us. It's, it, it, it feeds the people. I, I always thought that I'm not naive that I can't, you know, change the world, but I thought I could might just give some people, inspire some people to think about something. And you talked about the whole spiritual essence of the music. Can you, can you um, some more elaborate on that? And when you say, be, be specific when you say spiritual. Like, the whole concept of the watermelon and the sound. Okay, yeah. It's, we have a concept like, uh, I have a concept with my musicians and I'm talking about, I'm talking about like if you take a half a watermelon and you lay the watermelon down and you imagine a, a white light, like a cosmic tone going up to the universe. And, and this is like both and concept. Like you got to be, you got to be inside and outside at the same time. You're, you're, you have to be. You have to have a duality, and that's the spiritual concept of, of what we do with the music. Like we 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 stretch out and we go beyond. Like as as Sun Ra would say, we 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 stretching into Pluto and Saturn at the same time. But we right here with that chitlin and that hog mug at the same time. That duality of us of us as a people. It's like you know. It's like the science and the and the soul. The science and the spirit come together in athletics. Politics and everything; those are the people that you. That, those are the. Those are the people that you watch because they come and they run some kind of uh, concepts about you at the same time, and at the same time they have never lost touch with the common man. They can go around the corner. They can go into the Linux Lounge, the bar, and talk to to Junior, or they can talk to the number runners, or they can talk to that people, and then they can go talk to uh, Michelle Obama and hold a conversation with her. You're that kind of person. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, like, you know, you're running with kings and queens, and then the next minute you're running with pimps and hustlers. <laughs> and we'll end on that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's where, no, you can't end on that because that's where our, you know, that's, you know, like, you, we, that's we, our community. That's our community. Right. Yeah, that's our and community. we brought the music back to our community. Yeah, you know, and, and, and not being condescending. You don't have to play down to people. You can take them. Right. You can take them. You just gotta, you gotta lift them take them. You gotta lift them and take them. So we're gonna do this other set. I'm real happy the first night. We had a light two hour rehearsal and uh, you know, they, they troopers. They troopers, you know, but you know, you want to get it right. You want to get it right. You want to get it right. That's a bad camera you got, Jenny. And thank you. <laughs>